What's up, everyone? I'm your female otaku, and I'm here to review episode two of Concrete Revolution. And I am not in my room right now because my parents are working downstairs on important work. So I snuck up to my Emoto's room. Good thing she's not in the house at the moment. <laughs> No, but anyway, so with this episode of Concrete Revolution, it's a little difficult to review Concrete Revolution because the majority of the time, and I know it's not just me because a lot of you guys said this last week, last week in the comments, okay, that uh, it's very hard to follow along with what's going on in Concrete Revolutio, okay? It's like, you don't really fully know what's going on. You have an idea, but you don't really know exactly for sure, for sure what's going on, okay? So here's what I was able to get out of this episode, okay? So we have Ghost Boy here and he can shapeshift as well and uh, he, this was his backstory on how he got into the Superhuman Bureau. And then there was this bug girl named Kampe. Something's going on with her. Flash forward into the future. He meets her again. Um, Jiro's there doing, I don't know, is he rebelling? He's doing something. He's doing something. That's what he's doing. Yeah, um... As much as I would like to continue reviewing Concrete Revolution, it's just very difficult to do so. Because you see, Concrete Revolution has two things holding it back that's making not just me, but a lot of you guys confused, okay? The first thing is, is that they haven't really fully explained the universe yet, all right? Like, is this, in this world, is there... Is anything and everything can exist here? Like aliens, monsters, and then you have the superhumans, and then you have regular humans. How much of each race are there? And how, how much do they interact with each other? Uh, do these races come from different planets as well? Are there other planets? Like, we don't know very much about the world. So that's one major thing that gets a lot of us confused. The second thing is, is when the episode goes along, the storytelling, they flip flop from flash forward to flashbacks and stuff, which is fine because like that happens from time to time in anime. But the thing is that how they transition it isn't very well done, okay? It kind of just happens and then it's all, and then you gotta like take a couple of minutes to think like, wait a minute, this is the past. But then all of a sudden, bam, it'll go back over into the future and you're like, wait a minute, this is the future. No, wait, this is the past. Wait, oh no, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> like, it's very, very difficult to follow along with Concrete Revolution. Very difficult. So this was what I was able to get out of the episode, okay? I don't think I can really review Concrete Revolution anymore since it's just so hard to follow along. It's not that I'm stupid, it's just Concrete Revolution isn't doing its job right. Like I said, with the transitioning to flash forwards and flashbacks, they're not transitioning it very well. Concrete Revolution isn't a bad anime. It's not, all right? I really love it like stylistically. I love how it's inspired by like comic books and like American pop art. I really like that, okay? And you have Jiro's hair who's on fleek, Goodness, <laughs> dude posed a lot too. Did you notice that? Come to think of it, this episode two, sorry, I'm sidetracking a little bit. This episode two, he actually said that he's a human, but I could have sworn last week he said that he was an alien. And then like, he has like this arm thing. So it's like, what? <laughs> Literally, what? Okay, I think I'm done here. Uh, so yeah, if you want, go ahead. Continue Concrete Revolution. I don't know, maybe I'll watch it still on the side. Probably not for long, though, since you, you can't really follow along with it too well. Mm. Oh, well. But catch me later as a review, One Punch Man, where I will also announce the first theme for Anime Spirit Week. I'm your female otaku, sayonara.